It is not uh, for any government to legislate uh, what, happen, what a woman chooses to do with her body, and that is uh, the bottom line. I have uh, made it clear that uh, future candidates uh, need to uh, be uh, completely uh, understanding that they will be expected to vote uh, pro-choice uh, on any bills. The, uh, that's part of the screening process. That is part of the screening process. That's part of the green light process. So, so you ask people when they want to run, like on this issue, are you pro-choice? We, we, we check on a number of issues. How do you feel about the Charter of Rights and Freedoms? How do you feel about uh, uh, same-sex marriage? How do you feel about uh, you know, pro-choice? Pro uh, where are you on that? And we make sure that the people who are stepping forward are consistent with the Liberal Party uh, as it is now, as it stands under my leadership. <laughs> How do you feel about democracy and uh, freedom of conscience? That was Liberal leader Justin Trudeau making it entirely clear that there is no longer room in the Liberal Party for MPs, candidates or members who believe in the dignity of life. And Justin made this announcement the, the day before thousands of Canadians rallied on Parliament Hill and, and elsewhere to show their support for human life. Trudeau isn't alienating the fringe members of his party, but 60% of Canadians who would support some sort of law to protect the unborn. Now, my good friend, Father Stefano Penner, a Yale philosophy PhD, one of the most intelligent, thoughtful and balanced men I know. He's a terrific guy. A uh, native of Saskatchewan, a world traveler, now the guy in charge of training Catholic seminarians for virtually all of Western Canada. He wrote this to me yesterday. Hi, friend, just sent this to the Liberals. Four generations of Liberal voters ended for my family today. Justin's anti-free speech and anti-life diktat is appalling. You just lost the 26 votes of my clan. I will have no choice as a lecturer and teacher who engages over 10,000 people a year across Canada but to vocally advocate against Trudeau liberalism, end of quote. Remember, Trudeau liberalism. Now, this is not some angry anti-abortionist, but a calm, liberal-minded academic. And he is not alone. Oh, no, he is far, far, far from being alone. There are millions of people who oppose abortion in this country. And whether the Tories like it or not, many of them have long voted liberal. They've had to hold their noses a bit, you know, but they've explained and justified their choice by pointing out that while the Liberals have been dreadful on the abortion issue, they've never persecuted pro-lifers or stopped them running or becoming MPs. Now, actually, that isn't entirely true. But there were enough pro-life Liberal MPs, Tom Wapel, John McKay, Dan McTagg and so on, to make the apocrypha appear sort of genuine. They also argued that the NDP was even worse. No NDP MP and no one running to be an NDP MP will ever vote against a woman's right to choose. Simple as that. That's their problem, not mine. I have a, a caucus comprised entirely of people who believe in a woman's right to choose. Yeah, we want to kill more babies, even than you, Justin. Yeah. Well, of course the NDP are worse. I mean, Thomas Mulcair prides himself on being more pro-abortion than Justin Trudeau. Well done, sir. Defenders of the Liberals also argue that the Conservative party refuses to address the issue. Well, yeah, I mean, th th there's some truth in this. But there are hundreds of pro-life Tory candidates, dozens of pro-life Tory MPs, and several pro-life Tory cabinet ministers. Now, this is important. As a pro-lifer, you know I am, I'm disappointed by Stephen Harper and his government. But he has never tried to prevent committed opponents of abortion from becoming MPs. The Conservative Party is a big blue tent. The Liberals have now become a little red cottage where arrogant boy Trudeau and his friends order people around, stifle debate, smother diversity and destroy democracy. Justin is siding with the most radical pro-abortion zealots in this country. If you don't believe me, listen to what our Faith Goldie found out yesterday. So why, why are you anti-life? I'm not anti-life, I'm pro-choice. There's a very big difference. The brain of a fly has hundreds of thousands of cell, cells. A blastocyst has, you know, hundreds. Okay, you kill flies all the time, so please make these distinctions if you're able. So fetuses are like flies? <laughs> no, this is ridiculous. I, mean, I am pro-choice, and I'm standing here because it's my democratic right to be here. So you support abortion for all nine months? I am pro-choice, and I am standing here because it's my democratic right to be here. Did you ladies not come prepared with any arguments? 
What's the point of arguing with someone like you? You ladies not thought about the answer to this question, or are you just yeah, kidding? We're just not interested in discussing with you, so can you leave? Oh, they're a secret. This way, because we're trying to talk to some kids that need some education. What about the child? What child? It's a fetus. So it sells. It might as well be a mushroom in your belly. At what point does it become a child then? When it's born. And it's your choice to wear what you're wearing today, but no one's stopping you from doing that. I'm not killing anyone. <laughs> So, if a woman as a human being wants to make a choice, and she wants to make a choice to kill the child that is inside of her, that is her choice to make. Did you hear that, Justin Trudeau? Did you hear that? Now, this is not the place for a long discourse about abortion. I've made the case in the past. I'll make it again. But I will say that the scientific and moral arguments for life beginning at conception and the political and economic arguments for not funding elective surgery while cutting back on essential procedures are at least compelling, if not overwhelming. But how did the Liberal Party become this dinosaur of old-style bully boy politics? It is supposed to be, yeah, liberal, liberal. Yet the, the new lead, leader, he's chosen candidates, rejected others, insulted people, contradicted himself. He praises murderous regimes and vile, the, vile theocracies. It, look, good Lord, man, you say you believe in choice, but you've just told about half the country that they can't run as liberal candidates and that liberals who have any reservations at all about unbridled and fully funded abortion, they have no choice. You claim to care about women, but you have silenced pro-life women and told them to know their place. You boast that you believe in a woman's right to control her body, an absurd misnomer, but you revere China, where women are ordered not to have more than one child, and if they do become pregnant, they're forced to abort, especially if that child is female. Yes, Justin, killing babies simply and only because they are little girls. There are layers of stupidity, arrogance, oppression, and illiberalism involved in this decision. And I also wonder if Trudeau came up with it himself or whether it's his handlers trying to take the left-wing vote away from the NDP and move the Liberals to the hard left. This may, however, be for the best. And it may re redefine the Liberal Party well, as a party of nastiness and massive central control. We'll see. We will also see, with all due respect, what the Catholic bishops in particular do and how they react. I haven't heard much yet. Liberalism runs deep in Canadian Catholicism, and I know some pretty senior Catholic clergy who go weak at the knees at the mere thought of the Trudeau clan. And Catholic church leaders have for too long appeared to prefer establishment acceptance to standing firm and loud on central issues. So in a way, Herr Leader Justin, we thank you for this authoritarian crap. Not the church and not the state, a, a liberal's right to choose their fate. The March for Life was yesterday. Tens of thousands of people, many of them young, assembled in our major cities to, well, protest their love for unborn life. Now, we at Sun News uh, covered the Ottawa March where there were abusive and even illegal counter demonstrations. So, now, Campaign Life's uh, Matthew Wojciechowski, he's been on the show before. I always have to check his name, though, silly me. He was there to cover the, uh, the issue and uncover it in many ways as well. Matt, You've got a sunburn from it, but also I think you were slightly taken aback because there is a photograph, we'll show it shortly, of you being confronted by various women who, for some bloody reason, always seem to decide to take their tops off when they feel angry. Yeah, that's, uh, I think that's the picture of me with my mouth open there. <laughs> but that's not going to details. Your, your, your parents might be <laughs> I, watching. I but believe... I believe, Michael, that's the, at the, they capture the moment of me actually screaming at the police officers to do something about this because they were not doing anything. And yet I, I said there are children in, in, in the audience. Uh, there was a very powerful picture of, I believe, MP Watson's family and his children on the hill. And he's covering his children's eyes and the children are kind of, uh, you know, turned away. 
Um, that's a very powerful image, I think. Okay, and, uh, I didn't realize, I mean, you, you, you do, your mouth is open, and I thought it was maybe shock, but you were trying to tell the police to act. That's but right. there was an arrest. Now, what happened was, and I wish more people could, could, could see this, because we're not speaking of ordinary Canadians who believe in, in a woman's right to abort her baby, I and mean, I disagree with them, but of course they have a perfect right to express their point of view. We're speaking of, of ugly, violent protests. We've got a couple of clips that we're, we're going to have a look at, and, and I mean, some of it actually has to be blurred out and obscure because it's so... Anyway, let's see the first one, please. As they give witness to the God-given dignity, beauty, and value of human life. He prays that this event foster greater respect, greater respect for the inviolable right to life of each person. Greater respect for the inviolable right to life of each person. That, that was the, the primate of the Catholic primate of Canada, and he refused to be interrupted. But instead of disagreeing, and, and good Lord, uh, pro-abortion people have enormous amounts of time and room to, to give their point of view. These women take their tops off and just keep screaming, F you, F your morals, F you, F your morals. Now, the police did intervene there, did they not? Uh, eventually they did, yes. Um, once uh, we were yelling at them to, to help us out to do something, they did intervene and they did remove those women from the hill. Mm. Now, there weren't many of them, and that has to be said. There were a handful of these women who wanted to take their tops off. And I, I, I don't want to appear rude, but of all the women who should take their tops off, these were not probably the, the right women to do so. Uh, but why do you think they can't simply make their case intellectually or even emotionally? Why do they have to act like, well, animals? I believe uh, they are very, very angry, and they use violence to express that anger. And you know what? They have, you know, they, they're obviously, they disagree with our position. Uh, they, uh, they hate uh, any type of morality. They hate religion. They hate God. That is their number one message. Uh, that is why they tend to attack clergy members uh, in most cases. And they express themselves in such an angry way uh, that, uh, I mean, a kudos to Cardinal Lacroix. He did not even budge. I mean, he just kept going, completely ignored yeah. them. And I think that's the best way, that's the best response I, we could do. Well, I think it probably is. But uh, we've, we've got some more clips and reactions from people. And I mean, there's so much that we can uh, show. And I, I do recommend people go to the internet and to our Facebook site. Let's see another clip, please. This dude, it's none of your <laughs> male business. It's not your <laughs> place. I don't tell you what to do with your dick. If you don't want to get someone pregnant, don't. But you can't tell us we have to have babies. It's none of your business. Maybe if you shriek it at a higher Why frequency. Hey, this woman, this, Why are you filming this woman is, 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 her, is like shaking her boobs in my face. I, I don't That's know. Your if camera. You, you wanted attention. You want to show. You want to film something. No, I feel I feel sexually harassed now. Then keep walking. You're the one talking about That's, my sexual organs. Well, you're, you're putting on All a display. All of your signs are about my sexual organs. No. Every single one of these signs is about my sexual reproduction. I care about your heart. What a cutie. Um. Is there any possibility to be serious that there's mental illness here? I mean, she seemed, she was hysterical, uh, this, this wanting to show her cleavage. And, and then there's, there's the fellow standing with her, a sort of obese fellow, who seems to be eating, is it ice cream or poutine, constantly throughout the interview. But th these are not normal people. They may be Justin's friends, but they're not normal people. No, they're not. And I, I, I actually, the level of anger that you see in them, uh, I mean, you know, their, their way of arguing is not through normal uh, civil dialogue. It's by shouting over the person they're speaking with. As you can see, uh, she just keeps screaming the same thing over and over again, not making any normal arguments. Uh, it's, it's all about her, about her reproductive rights, her reproductive organs. Uh, that's the last thing we're thinking about when we're on that hill marching for life, where we care about them, we care about the, the babies that are conceived. Uh, and it's, it's a very sad, sad day, but, you know, they're yeah. going to show up. And if you look at the numbers, we had thousands and they had uh, course, a handful. Of course. But I, I did hear from a mutual friend, Matt, that you, you're actually now you, you've got a date with that girl. Is that true? <laughs> uh, a date <laughs> over coffee. Yes, at a Starbucks <laughs> to talk about it. Yes, for sure. Hey, uh, put some sun cream on, on that, um, that very white face of yours. Uh, <laughs> and uh, thank you for all the work you do. You take care. Thanks for having me, Michael.